So now we are going to speak about the etiologies of low birth weight. For the etiologies of low birth weight, it's generally divided into two. We are going to have etiologies related to prematurity, as we have already seen, and we have etiologies related to um, intrauterine growth restriction or small for gestational age. Basically, so when you have low birth weight, it can either be related to prematurity, we have already visualized all the etiology related to prematurity, or it can be etiology related to intrauterine growth restriction. Basically, now to evaluate for intrauterine growth restriction, you need to use intrauterine growth restriction curves. Basically, and this is different from the phantom curves. Basically, it's different from the phantom curves that is used to assess assess for the growth of a premature the phantom curve is used to assess for growth of premature basically why the intrauterine growth restriction curves are used to assess for the for 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 intrauterine growth restriction small for gestational age now you need to know that there's a difference between um, intrauterine growth restriction and small for gestational age is they actually both of them are the same just that intrauterine growth restriction is considered for fetus while small for gestational age is considered for a living child so what is small for gestational age small for gestational age is when a living child birth weight is less than <clears throat> when a living child birth weight is less than 10 percentile is less than 10 percentile of children of the same gestational age of same gestational age is it that is small for gestation for the small the small gestational age when your your weight is less than 10 percentile of a living child is less than 10 percentile of children of the same gestational age that's small for gestational age <clears throat> normal for, for gestational age so if you have a child that has a low birth weight, you have to also evaluate if it's normal for gestational age. A normal for gestational age is when yeah, the weight of the child is between the 10th percentile to the 90th percentile of the children of the same gestational age. While large for gestational age is when the child is greater than the 90th percentile of children of the when the weight of the child is greater than 90th percentile of the weight of all the children with the same gestational age. Basically, so those are how you divide. So when you have a child that is small for gestational age, that is the weight of that child is less than 10 percentile of children of the same gestational age. It is called small for gestational age or intrauterine growth restriction. Now, when you have small for gestational age or intrauterine growth restriction, it is divided into two. You have symmetric intrauterine growth restriction, symmetric intrauterine growth restriction, or you have asymmetric intrauterine growth restriction. Is it clear? Now, for symmetric intrauterine growth restriction, you need to point out the fact that in symmetric intrauterine growth restriction, it is going to be usually associated with this pathologic. Pathologically, we have pathologies which occur less than 20 weeks of gestation. If you have pathologies in mother that occur less than 20 weeks of gestation, it's mostly patho um, it's going to be it's, um, causing symmetric intrauterine growth restriction. But when we have pat when you have um, um, pathologies occurring after 20 weeks of gestation is going to is going to result to asymmetric intrauterine growth restriction basically so let's take example for symmetric intrauterine growth restriction you have example of disorders like infections <clears throat> if you have infections like torches infections basically it's going to result to a symmetric intrauterine growth restriction if you have malaria usually disturbing the mother before the of gestation it can result to that if you have iatrogenic drugs drugs used before 20 weeks of gestation can result to symmetric intrauterine growth restriction iatrogenic drugs which are teratog we have teratogenic action basically teratogenic action we have alcohol is equal like in the case of fetal alcohol syndrome, which is used in less than 20 weeks of detection, can result to symmetric intrauterine growth restriction. We have fetal alcohol syndrome. We have also smoking, is equal in these cases, it can result to symmetric intrauterine growth restriction. So, those are different elements, pathology, which actually with symmetric intrauterine growth restriction. But it can also be physiologic. 
It is physiologic in cases where it is constitutional or familial, meaning that all children from that race, like in example in Cameroon, you have a race called the Pygmies. Is it clear? Where you are going to have a constitutional symmetry in triangle transition. So it's not the pathology, but it's just the, the, the tribe in which they are that is symmetrically in triangle transition. It's normal for them. Is it clear? So that is constitutional. Now the other one we have asymmetric intrauterine restriction. When pathologies occur after twenty gestation, in this case we are going to have preeclampsia. Generally, preeclampsia occur after twenty gestation can be treated here. Is it clear? If the mother starts smoking after twenty gestation can be treated here. If the mother starts taking alcohol after twenty gestation can be treated here. Iatrogenic or teratogenic medication after twenty gestation it can also be involved with asymmetric intrauterine growth restriction basically and we can also have echondroplasia echondroplasia Basically, echondroplasia usually with asymmetric intrauterine growth restriction also in symmetric we are going to have endocrine abnormalities endocrine abnormalities like in the case of um, endocrine abnormalities like in the case of the hypo um, somatotrophies where you have low growth hormone production and all that so all that are disorders are treated with intrauterine growth restriction basically and you have other elements with intrauterine growth restriction that can be actually with congenital abnormalities <clears throat> so we are finished with the etiologies of intrauterine growth restriction now um, so those are the different elements that you have to evaluate the, uh, your, your, your patient so then the next thing that you have to evaluate now is how to make a diagnosis of birth asphyxia prematurity and intrauterine growth restriction